Mm-hmm. Welcome, everybody. How's everybody doing tonight? Just finished watching a bunch of videos. One of them was, uh, I was trying to look up some information on Michael Jordan's last dance. My mentality was to go out and win at any cost. Jordan is the most talented player in the NBA by far. Yeah, I was looking up uh, The Last Dance to see if they had it on the internet because Lord knows nobody watches cable here, so I won't pay for it. And I'm hoping to stream it somewhere else. I'm wondering if they have it on that Disney Plus deal where you get the Disney Plus, ESPN Plus, Hulu. Yeah, you get Hulu. So I'm going to sign up for that after this quarantine thing is done. I haven't been watching a lot of TV or Netflix or anything like that. YouTube has a great amount of my attention and um, what's going on on Instagram as well. Welcome. This is Scratch Me on the Surface. My name is Daniel. Tonight, yeah, I was curious about what's going on with this Michael Jordan documentary being that it's all over online and it's just all over my YouTube feed, Instagram feed. It's all over my Instagram search, all over my recommended feed. Being that I'm a basketball fan, sometimes I like to watch clips of old stuff and finally I took out the time to sit back and look up some Jordan stuff. I play 2K too. I like to play 2K every once in a while when I have some downtime. I played Jordan versus Bird, double dribble. And then later on, things evolved and we started playing NBA Live, which was a lot of fun back in the early 90s. The 2000s came around and 2K took over. It's been 2K with me ever since 2007 or so. So it's been a good 13 years now that i've been playing 2k i mean some years i would play it a handful of times some years i'll dedicate some serious time i've witnessed the evolution of basketball games and it's been insane and as of lately this debate going on with lebron and jordan as far as who's the best in the world the best of all time being that i'm a 80s kid i grew up watching jordan from his inception seeing him in college being drafted in 1984 and beating my knicks over and over again in the early 90s and seeing his evolution from the time he came into the league up until the time he won the championship how everybody was considering him not being able to win one because they felt as if he didn't have it in him but eventually he came around and dominated the league in the 90s it was a spectacle to watch it was incredible to see the first year 100 percent, i was behind him already seen the Lakers win it too many times. And I know that the Lakers were on their downside. Michael was up and coming. I really wanted to see him win his first one. And then when he went against Clyde Drexler, I was a Drexler fan. I love Drexler. I like Portland Trailblazers. I seen everybody as a Jordan fan. I didn't dislike Jordan at the time. It wasn't until after he won his third one where I was like, all right, that's enough. <laughs> Somebody needs to stop. What are you laughing? Yeah, after a while seeing him beat up on the Knicks over and over and over again, being that I was a diehard Knicks fan all the way through the 80s, 90s, and I am still today a Knicks fan, even though we've been going through a 20 year drought ever since uh, Daddy Dolan passed away back in 1999, I think it was, and his son took over, and we've had the worst record in the league since he took over. I don't know what's going on. That's not here or there. Don't want to talk about that. Jordan, for me, was the best basketball player of all time by far. He was hated by many. He was appreciated by many. Some just wish he would break his ankles. But up until that time where I see him lose his father and then him coming back into the league when he first came back where he only played 13 games then went into the playoffs and he played against the magic i was going go and hope for orlando because i was living in orlando at the time i was a fan of penny hardaway I loved Shaq at the time up until he left when Shaq left i couldn't stand him when he went to the lakers it was great to see orlando win against the bulls but it sucked to see Orlando get swept at the time I would have rather see the Bulls play but the following year he came back and he came back better than ever it was a dominant spectacle to watch like Jordan was on the next level after that the competitiveness was like unmatched like nobody in the league could even compare like he just his work ethic was not natural it was just insane and I went for him that year I watched the first year the following year I didn't even see because I felt as if he it's just he's gonna win it again there's no way possible utah jazz was gonna be able to beat him second time around just malone and stockton just didn't have enough we already knew that he was gonna three beat his career was sensational now we're living in today's era and lebron is is it is what it is he's an incredible player like he's a dominant force in the league right now barely unstoppable even though he's been torn down here and there like Kawhi leonard shows him the business um durant 
took advantage of him one year. You know, his first year actually going to the championship was one of the most disappointing finals I've ever seen in my life. After game one, I felt like he threw in the towel. He gave up too easy. He didn't want it. Just, he didn't want to be embarrassed. But you see his evolution, his game, the hatred that he, he mustered up, especially after the fact that he was going to win one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But we also know you three kings came down here to win championships. Not one, championships. Not two. LeBron, tell us about that. Not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, not seven. Not Are you serious? I mean, it's already going to be a circus show. You know that him, Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh were going to kill it. They, they were elite players in the league at the time. Three top ten players on one team is just insane. Back to Bosh. Insane to the side. Dump. It's amazing. So amazing. It was crazy to see the Dallas Mavericks beat him that year. It was humbling. But throughout time, you know, the humbling came here and there. In this generation, he is the best player. But I never related him to Jordan, ever. I always related him to Magic because they were both 6'8", great distributors of the ball, great scorers. It's as of recent where LeBron actually has a ratchet. Like, he's he's been hitting him from three like crazy. But, you know, he's had to face up against Durant. He's had to face up against Kawhi Leonard. And those boys are sharpshooters and you have to step up your game when it comes to the three-point game. It's obvious that shooting in the NBA has evolved now more than ever before. It's not hard to tell. Every single team now in the NBA has an ace sharpshooter. That one person that could just dump threes left and right. Before, it wasn't like that. You know, the three-point game wasn't as important. I felt that change when Steph Curry came around and he changed up the game a lot. Chance to tie it here for Golden State. Curry's got it. And Curry will let it go for three. That's a great offensive rebound by Maurice Spates. Nothing wrong with this one by Stephen Curry knocking down the shot. But before that one, I don't understand. You have to follow him on the first shot. Here we are in 2020, and we're looking at this scenario. It's talked about everywhere in the barbershops. There's so many channels. There's so many places where people could debate this issue of LeBron James and the great, to me, the GOAT, the greatest of all time, Michael Jordan. I seen him, an Instagram post that somebody put up because they seen this guy with white hair and they said, no wonder why he dominated the 90s. There was a lot of men that took their craft very serious. Like there was, it was a serious deal. Yes, there's a lot of talent, but at the same time, we're living in an area where everybody's, seems like everybody's injury prone. You got to be careful now with these days, but the MCLs, the ACLs, with the Achilles tendon, with the backs, all this wear and tear going on. These kids don't start playing basketball in high school. They're playing basketball from the time they're five. They're dribbling the ball around and they're playing basketball all throughout their lives. They're running and jumping, stopping and going, putting a lot of pressure on their body and their knees that's why the nba in the future not saying now i feel like the nba is going to be looked at how the nfl's looked at today where they're being overly cautious about their kids going into play football in the nfl and risking the chance of getting cte cte is a big deal imagine getting cte and sometimes i question myself if i have it because you know sometimes the brain goes through slippage and i used to love football i didn't mind banging heads i didn't mind you know that that like i loved it like there was something about it I'm, i mean i was scared at the same time i mean imagine i mean I, I understand physics imagine a big dude coming at you coming at you full force ducking his head and you're standing there all vulnerable going in one direction not looking in that direction he's coming at you and hitting you hard knocking your wind out and you're just knocked out on the floor on the 26 you'll get a shot at it whoa helmets out balls out morgan cox made the tackle Apper 46. The second hit that comes in though is the one that knocks the helmet off. In the 80s as a kid growing up, that was huge. My light went out. I mean, us kids really thought you were the man if you really knocked somebody out by hitting them, laying them on the floor. Like, you got your little Kool-Aid points, all your boys were like, you're the man. But now these days, it's, it's through science, it's helped us to discover that, yes, people are getting sick, people are getting hurt, and I feel as if the NBA in the near future is going to be that way. Because when they see massive amounts of people starting to retire, and they say, hey, all this wear and tear is not good for you. 
I mean, what can I say? It's modern day gladiator sport. It is without a shadow of a doubt. You're putting your body in danger. You're putting yourself in positions where you know very well you're gonna get hurt. You could very well retire with bad knees, bad backs. I mean, you're gonna suffer a lot. There's a lot of people who are retired right now that's suffering, they're just dealing with it. Do I think that it should be abolished, gotten rid of? Absolutely not. You know the consequences, you know what you're getting into, you know what you're signing is just like being a police officer, you know the dangers that, that are entailed, you're going to be going after thugs and drug dealers and people who are going to shoot back at you that don't, they refuse to go to jail. People at the end of the day, they want that big money and that's the only way they could do it. They've dedicated themselves from the time they were kids up until that moment where they get drafted into the NBA. Kudos to those who really don't do it for the paycheck but do it for the passion. I mean, passion is everything. It's just like doing video i would love to upload a video every single day but i'm taking time out to learn a lot of things and pushing myself to do things that are out of the ordinary i'm learning things that are like that are mind-blowing that's just if i feel like i'm going back to school which is great education should never cease you should never stop growing you should never stop reading you should never stop advancing in knowledge there's so much out here to learn and we've learned a lot of things when it comes to your health i know that basketball will always be cherished and we'll see the greatest athletes of all time do i think that there was players that were better obviously but they made bad decisions and choices in their lives there were so many players who were supposed to be the next jordan or the next kobe or the next this and that in the third and they never came out to be that because there was a side of them that wanted to do something other than what they were supposed to be doing like i knew an athlete he was a client of mine i cut his hair the dude ran a 4-4 and 40 was an incredible athlete arm like crazy but there was a part of him that liked to party and he got in trouble partying even though he got signed to the nfl he he was uh, a backup quarterback one night decided to go out hang out with with his friends don't know all the details i just know that he went to the club he got lit he got hammered got confronted something happened and the following day it was aired on espn and right after that they let him go the team let him go and he was an incredible athlete time is in your hands you know your physics you know what you're built like you know what you can do you know what you can accomplish only you know sometimes only you and god know you have every right to push yourself to the next level and do what it is that's within you. I'm taking this documentary, The Last Dance, as something that's incredibly inspiring and something as an example to achieve in no matter what endeavor that you do in this life. Jordan was an example. His work ethic was crazy. His abilities to accomplish what he accomplished was out of this world. He was built for this. To me, Jordan was the greatest of all time. I disliked him at one period of time, but he was the greatest of all time. Undeniably the greatest by far. We go argue that all day between him and LeBron. To be honest, LeBron's not even my second. Might not even be my third. They say he's the greatest two-way player of all time. I think Kawhi Leonard's better than him. That's just my opinion. And everybody has their opinion. You have a right to have your opinion. You have a right to say what you want to say. This is America. It's freedom of speech. You have the right and freedom to speak. It should not be under threat of even being censored. That's what makes America so beautiful. Anyways, I'm gonna end this video right here. I just wanted to talk about this and what I've been seeing. Jordan is the greatest of all time. That's just it. I don't think it's even close. <laughs> That's just me. Anyways, you guys have a good night. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. If you like what you've seen, like it. Say what's up, see how you're doing. Appreciate the work. Tell me who you think is the best of all time. Who's gonna win the chip when things resume after we get over this epidemic that we're in? supposedly anyways thank you for watching see you on the next video